While we were building our rocket tank, we ran into a slight problem. You see, in order to actually make the tank, we have to push the bulkheads into the tube. But they need to be really, really tight in order for there to be a good seal. So it turns out there isn't really a force that we can create with our muscles <laughs> to actually push that bulkhead into the tube. So we had to get a bit creative about how we're going to go about doing this. And yes, some of the things that we created were looking a little bit like torture devices. But don't worry, no rockets were harmed in the making of this video. So let's go a little bit more into detail about the methods that we used in order to push our bulkheads into our carbon fiber tube. To start off, we had the obvious first goal of let's get that bulkhead into that CFRP tube. So to do this, we created this contraption here, which has a pusher cross, which sits on the top of the CFRP tube. And then we have the bottom, which holds the bottom bulkhead as we push the upper CFRP tube into that bulkhead. And essentially, in order to make that pushing happen, we have two rods that run up the length of the tube, and we have some nuts at the top that can be screwed in order to push the cross downwards. The clever part of this strategy is that we can basically have the contraption be in tension using these steel rods while applying a compressive force to the CFRP tube and the bulkhead. Clever girl. This overall contraption proved to be quite effective, but we realized the slight problem once we had put the bulkheads into the tube, which is, well, how do we get them back out? <laughs> we could use a similar contraption as to the one we used for putting the bulkheads in, but we would have to apply a tensile strength on the tube and the bulkheads, which would mean we'd be generating a compressive force on our contraption. And steel rods don't really work well in compression. They kind of start bending quite a lot. So we had to make some slight modifications in order to allow ourselves to push the bulkheads back out. But why do we want to take those bulkheads out? After all, we went through all that effort just to push them in. Um, that does make no sense. My man. Well, after our first attempt at pushing the bulkheads into the tube, we wanted to first verify that it was in fact leak proof. So we poured some water into the tank and, well, it turns out we had some leaks. So pushing out the bulkheads was necessary in order to find the source of the leak. To do this, we decided to use a similar concept to what we were doing for pushing the bulkheads back in and using a contraption that basically the tank will sit inside in order to basically take the bulkheads in or out. But instead of having the bulkheads just resting on the bottom of this contraption, we needed something a little bit more secure. So we ended up screwing two beams onto the bottom of the bottom bulkhead in order to create a strong fastening point so that we could anchor the rest of our stand. Then we fitted four wooden spars along the outside of the tank, which would then connect to the cross that would be on the top in order to create the second anchor point. So basically the way this thing works is we have these four spars that run the length of the tube. And you can see that they're connected at the cross at the top, which is going through the top of our bulkhead. And that's kind of like an anchor point. And then we can basically screw these nuts that are on the bottom here. And those put pressure onto that wooden cross on the top. And they put a higher and higher compressive force into these wooden spars which eventually should push the bulkhead that is screwed on the bottom out of the tube. And you can actually see this happening. We're already starting to see more of the bulkhead down here. That's that, the second seal is the seal that you're seeing there going through those holes. So in a little bit of time, we should see the entire bulkhead popping out of the tube. For our first attempt at pulling out the bulkhead, this actually worked pretty well. But unfortunately, after more leak tests were failed and we had to pull the bulkheads back out again, we noticed that this contraption wasn't quite strong enough and we actually ended up breaking a lot of the pieces. You can see here that we actually broke the cross that was screwed to the bottom of the bulkhead and we also had a lot of bending between the interface between the wood and the rods, which was causing a lot of problems with keeping everything in line as we were pushing it down. So we needed to make a little bit of an upgrade. <laughs> All right, so here we have our second attempt at the contraption that will push the bulkhead out of the tube. We had an issue because basically we had a seal down here. You can see it right there. It got stuck and that creates a whole bunch of friction and basically it's impossible to push it down anymore. So we're gonna take it back out and hopefully rescue it. 
But to do that, we had to use some thicker wood. So this is six centimeters by six centimeters. Before we were just using, uh, I think it was four centimeters by five centimeters. So we had to really make that a bit thicker. We also w stepped up in the diameter of the steel rod. It's now M12, it was, used to be M8. The problem we were having there is that the M8 was actually bending. So we were putting so much force on it that it was not going to be working properly anymore. So hopefully M12 will be sufficient. We didn't change anything else really on top. We still just have the two wood beams going across. And we also increased the thickness on the wood that was attached to the bulkhead on the bottom. And that's because this actually broke last time and that's why we had to stop. So hopefully this will also be thick enough now to survive the loads that we're putting on it. So with our upgraded contraption, we're finally able to get the bulkheads in and out with pretty much no problems. In addition to that, after the fifth time of putting the bulkhead back in, we were finally able to actually pass the leak test. So no more pushing bulkheads in and out. Unfortunately, there was just one more little problem. The holes that were drilled into the CFRP tube didn't exactly line up with the holes that were drilled into the bulkhead. So we had to actually rotate the bulkhead in order to have them lining up with the holes. Obviously, we didn't wanna to have to take the bulkhead back out again and try to manually line them up and push it back in again. So we thought, hey, we should be able to just rotate this thing while it's already in the tube, right? Enter the last contraption that we made in order to manipulate these bulkheads inside of the CFRB tube. This one's not quite as fancy as the other two, but works on the same principles of leverage that we're using to actually push the bulkheads in. A great way to multiply the application of force of the bulkheads is to create a lever. So that's basically what these wooden beams are that are attached to the bulkheads. This one wasn't quite as easy to use and actually required a little bit of muscle in order to make it work. But in the end, we were actually able to rotate the bulkhead into the holes as we were expecting. Out of all the contraptions and quick fixes that we made, this was certainly potentially the most torturous, although I'm not sure who it was more torturous for, us or the rocket. Nevertheless, we're quite happy to have all of our screw holes lining up beautifully and finally being able to pass the leak test for the entire tank. Looks like we're ready to do that pressure test. To keep up to date with Astra's progress, be sure to subscribe and remember to expand your horizons.